Coming up, student voters aren't quite finished at the polls. Help for homeless teens and a photo of solidarity with Missouri students has unintended consequences at OU. This is OU Nightly. It was to be a demonstration of support, one school to another. A multiracial group of OU students gathering to show unity with students at the University of Missouri. The group came together dressed in black for this photo. It was a show of sol solidarity against the racial unrest experience on both campuses. Even OU's diversity vice president Jabbar Shumate joined in the effort. It was a happy moment shared by dozens of students. But this attempt to celebrate Missouri's triumph over racism opened old wounds at OU. It wasn't the pictures that caused the problem, but rather the insensitive words printed beneath them. OU Daily published a story about the event online, including three photos of the students and staff together. But the Daily described one photo in this way. It said Shoemate and the others raised their fist in solidarity with colored students at the University of Missouri. The term angered and dismayed many students on campus. OU Daily Managing Editor Dana Branham told OU Nightly the language was, was an honest mistake. The, the Daily Ponent published a long apology today. You can see it on OUDaily.com. OU's experience with racial unrest will be front and center on Sunday when NBC's Meet the Press talks with OU President Boren. Amid racial tensions across the country, Boren will be featured on a panel discussing racism in America and free speech on college campuses. He was picked for his experience handling the backlash last March here at OU over the SAE fraternity racist chant. The show airs Sunday at 8 a.m. The voters are in, the votes are in, and there is no winner yet in the race for president of OU student government. There's no clear winner this week, in this week's election, so Daniel Pei and Isaac Hill will go head-to-head -head again on Monday. OU students will have another chance to listen to both candidates next Monday when they join us on OU Nightly at 4.30 on Monday. Well, it was a little cool this morning. A little bit, yeah. yeah a little cool. So what's our, what are we expecting? Like, what's it right now? Right. Well, we had our first frost of the season this morning here in Norman. We were at about 34 degrees. We warmed up nicely, quickly, and a lot. 64 in Norman right now, 64 in Woodward as well, 66 down in Lawton. Temperatures will cool off by about 7 p.m. 50 degrees, cooling down quickly, 43 by midnight with clear, cool conditions, southerly winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And coming up in Maine weather, I'll tell you about a stormy weekend ahead, our first snow chance of the season, as well as our game day and seven-day forecast. But for now, back to you at the desk. Thanks, Brayden. High school students from over 20 Oklahoma schools visited OU today to learn more about attending college and hopefully walk away with some money. The students were attending the Tomas Riviera Educational Empowerment Conference that was hosted by the Omega Delta Phi fraternity. They were treated to a free meal and representatives from OU and other Oklahoma colleges showed them what their colleges have to offer. Although we do encourage students to apply to you know, four-year institutions, we don't want to limit their scope to just the University of Oklahoma, so we invite other colleges. Organizers have handed out over $13,000 in scholarships and educational materials. The Bridges Independent Living Services for Youth, or ALC, celebrated their 20th anniversary last night. The once assisted living center was flipped into a free housing complex for homeless students under the age of 21. There, students can live in fully furnished homes, receive food stamps, school transportation, and even health care. Students are given a set of requirements to fulfill academically as well as maintaining a job. One student says he doesn't know where he would be without Bridges, and it even inspired his career path. Bridges allowed me to, you know, lay down the, the, the floor plans of what it meant to be, you know, a, a, like a very good engineer. In Bridges is solely funded through donations. To find out more on how to donate, visit www.bridgesnorman.org. I think that's a great organization to be part oh, of. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. We'll still head on OU Nightly. The Battle of the Boys. Two major artists released new albums today. Plus, a famous actress is attacked at her own home.
Welcome back to OU Nightly. I'm Rashida Cabo with Screen Scene and what's going on in entertainment news. NCIS actress Polly Perrette was attacked last night outside of her Hollywood home. The actress says that a man grabbed her, punched, and repeatedly threatened to kill her. The suspect was arrested shortly after the attack. And for those of you fans that love The Voice, it just got a little more interesting. Earlier this month, a representative of Blake Shelton confirmed that he and his pop co-star Gwen Stefani are in fact dating. Friends at the show, like Christina Aguilera, have voiced their opinions, saying she's happy for the two and wishes them the best. There's been, many, much, specu there's been much speculation that the two bonded over their recent divorces this past summer. It was a battle of the boys. Justin Bieber and One Direction dropped new albums at midnight, and after much anticipation of who was going to get the top spot, drum roll please, Bieber is sitting pretty at number one, while One Direction has since dropped to the number four spot. When Bieber heard about the release dates, he said he wasn't really nervous, and I guess we all see why. I myself am, I mean, I really love Justin Bieber. I'm definitely a believer, I, and I'm not sorry. <laughs> I'm a 1D fan, but Cousin Niall has my heart. He does. That, that's very true. He's so I will stick up for 1D. Well, I'm sure all these girls are really excited. So I know. I am. Still ahead on OU Nightly, a California police officer has an interesting traffic stop. And Brayden is standing by with weather. 60s right now across the state, but a weekend cold front may bring us our first snow chance in Oklahoma. I'll tell you what you can expect next. Welcome back to OU Nightly. I'm Braden Long with your weather. We had sunny skies today. Those will continue on into, sat into a Saturday, but Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, we'll have wave after wave after wave of showers and thunderstorms across the state, which on the back end of a system that's moving through this weekend, we'll have a chance of our first snow of the season, though isolated mostly to northwestern Oklahoma. Lows tonight across the state, 30s and uh, freezing and frost conditions in the north and in central Oklahoma, 40s to the south, 41 in Altus, 37 in Oklahoma City, or Norman, and 39 in Woodward. As you have the door in the morning, 7 a.m., 37 degrees, chilly conditions, warming up quickly and nicely tomorrow. Pleasant conditions, 40 or 63 for your high by 4 p.m. Highs across the state tomorrow, 60s across the board as well. 66 in Ponca City, 63 here in Norman, and 65 in Woodward. Now looking for our timeline for our showers and thunderstorms on Sunday. Uh, Sunday afternoon, 4 o'clock, a line of showers and thunderstorms in northwestern, western Oklahoma, pushing off to the to the uh, north and to the east, central off into eastern Oklahoma. Round two starts uh, early morning on Monday. Mainly isolated to southern, eastern, and southeastern Oklahoma. Really strengthening as you go on throughout the day. Here's the snow that we're seeing um, wrapping back around. Really affecting us on Tuesday. Early morning on Tuesday, line of uh, thunderstorms again in northwestern, western Oklahoma. Really strengthening in southeastern Oklahoma as well. Pushing on off to the east, further off to the east as you go on throughout the early morning hours and the later hours of the day. The snow will wrap back around into the panhandle and impacting about Guyam and Boy City with possibly forecasted right now about six inches of snow right now. Totals can change. Keep an update as we get closer to time. Snow uh, will be affecting the Panhandle, northwestern Oklahoma. A mix is likely in far western Oklahoma in the later hours of Tuesday. Early morning hours, we're expecting rain, basically I-35 and to the east. How much rain are we going to get? About a half an inch to an inch across most of the state. Higher totals in southeastern and eastern Oklahoma, up to two inches locally are possible, but not a whole lot for the rest of the state to be to be uh, said and done. Seven-day forecast, 63 on Saturday. Cooling down on Sunday as the system goes through, 54 degrees. Highest chance of rain on Sunday and into Monday before we cool on off a little bit on Wednesday. And after that seven day forecast is central Oklahoma's first chance of snow on Sunday. A really big uh, temperature drop off on or on next Saturday and into Sunday as well. But 50s as you go up to, next, uh, to the next weekend. Awesome. I'm excited. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Brayden. Well, not even a self-driving car can avoid being stopped by police. An officer in California pulled over one of Google's self-driving cars today. There was a passenger in the car, but no one behind the wheel. The car was for safety issues, driving 11 miles below the speed limit and backing up traffic. The officer, officer decided not to give the car a ticket. All right, and of course you'll want to keep up with big news this hour. Um, NBC News has reported at least 35 dead in what appears to be a coordinated Paris attack, terrorist attack in Paris. We'll want to keep you updated with uh, this afternoon as the story continues. All right, that's it for news. Big Friday Sports is on deck. Our OU TV sports team gives us an extended look at what's happening in sports. Hunter McKee is standing by. 
Thanks, Annie. Today on Big Friday Sports, we're previewing the big game this weekend, and quarterback Zach Sanchez returns back to the field tomorrow after an ankle injury. Big Friday Sports is straight ahead. Welcome to OU Nightly's Big Friday Sports. I'm, I'm Hunter McKee. It's a fall Friday, so that means football. And I'm Ashley Davis, and if it's football you crave, you came to the right place. The Oklahoma Sooners begin their November to Remember run against the three best opponents in the Big 12 tomorrow when they battle the Baylor Bears in Waco. We have blowout coverage for you this evening after Big Friday Sports. Stay tuned for two hours of pregame from the Game Day You Gang. And the Game Day U game guys are already on site at McLean Stadium. Mason Prince is hosting the coverage and joins us now to help get the hype underway. Mason, take it away. All right, thanks, Ashley. Glad to be here for this big-time matchup. The Sooners come in 8-1 and one on the season, ranked 12th in the latest college football playoff rankings. They're taking on the Baylor Bears. 8-0 on the season, ranked 6th in those same rankings. Welcome to Waco. We are here at the house that RG3 built. McLean Stadium on the banks of the Brazos River. The Baylor Bears are undefeated in this stadium. 12-0. and They have not lost. As for the Sooners, this is the start of a three-game gauntlet. They have Baylor this week, TCU next in Norman, and finishing up the season in Stillwater against the undefeated Oklahoma State Cowboys. OU will get a boost in their secondary this week by having Zach Sanchez, the junior cornerback, back from a sprained ankle. He hopes to have a big impact on this OU defense to slow down the Baylor offense. Zach's good. He's practicing and looks good. And, you know, we... <laughs> He can't be out there playing against these guys unless he's 100%, that's for sure. So, you know, we're, we're confident that uh, he's going to be uh, where he needs to be to, to cover these guys. Obviously, this is his, uh, I think, retro junior year, um, and it, it's tough to see him go down like that and miss as many games as he did, but, you know, he, he, he never missed a beat. He's our alpha. You know, we call ourselves the Wolves, so he's our alpha. He's, he's the man in charge, um, and, you know, we, take, we follow his orders, so it's just one of those things where, you know, we finally get our captain back. Although, um, you know, I feel like just just missing in these games, I mean, we, we really seen, or we, you know, us just step up as a secondary uh, as a whole. It's not just about one man. It's about, you know, the whole team. All right. Well, as Ashley Davis called us, the game day you gang, I'm joined with by Clark Sachs, Reagan Ledbetter, and Carson Williams. Guys, the OU defense is going to have their hands full with this Baylor offense. What needs to happen for this defense to slow them down? I think the first thing we got to see is a lot of pressure from the defensive line. The best way that this game can really shift to OU is if you can get pressure and show the true freshman his true colors. Make him make some mistakes that the offense can capitalize on. Reagan. To me, it's tackling. We know this defense can cover it, and we know Baylor's going to score a lot of points and have their big plays, but to limit them to those longer plays by getting tackles, we don't, you'd have to be able to cover them, but in order to eliminate those long touchdowns that Baylor is known for getting, it's all about wrapping them up after they catch the ball. Carson. To me, it's all about OU secondary. You know, you already talked about Zach Sanchez coming back this week. That's going to be huge for them. But Dakota Austin has been playing phenomenal right now. So I, I just want to see him and uh, the uh, rest of uh, OU secondary just kind of keep that up. That's right. Well, we aren't done yet here in Waco. When we come back, we're going to send it back to you, Ashley. But when we come back, we'll break down the OU offense and how they're going to deal with Sean Oakman and the Baylor defense. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Mason. We'll check back with you in a few. Can't wait to hear more about the OU, OU Baylor game. It's going to be a huge game. There's pl plenty of big game action around the nation and inside the Big 12 tomorrow. Let's take a look at the in-game conference play. TCU looks to rebound at home against winless Kansas. Texas visits West Virginia. Kansas State goes to Lubbock to face Tech. And Oklahoma State visits Iowa State. It should be intriguing to see how the Cowboys fare against Iowa State this week after the Sooners routed the Cyclones. And OU football freshman Austin Siebert was one of 10 players named Friday as a semifinalist for the Ray Guy Award given annually to college football's most outstanding punter. Siebert, who also handles kicking duties for OU, has punted 34 times this season for an average of 43.5 yards, and only eight of his punts have been returned all year. The Ray Guy Award will be presented on Thursday, December 10th at 6 p.m. 
And last night, the eighth-ranked men's basketball team closed its exhibition slate with a 98-76 wire-to-wire victory over Mid-America Christian for the second straight preseason game. OU really showed off its depth with seniors Buddy Heald and Ryan Spangler combined for a score of 42 points leading the Sooners. OU dominated on the scoreboards and hit the road to Tennessee to play off against Memphis on Tuesday. And the Buffalo Bills took on the New York Jets on Thursday Night Football. Rex Ryan taking on his former team. The Bills jumped out to a big lead with a big touchdown here from quarterback Tyrod Taylor to Carlos Williams for the 26-yard touchdown. And then the Jets come storming back as Ryan Fitzpatrick lobs this 14-yard pass to Eric Decker, Decker for the 31-yard touchdown, and the Jets pull within a touchdown. And this actually happened twice, Ashley. Fourth and two, Colton Schmidt. The punter fumbles the snap and gives the Jets the ball with great field position. Bills win 22-17. What a great game and some snazzy uniforms. Oh, very snazzy. Weird, though. Still to come on Big Friday Sports, we'll talk some more football. And quarterback Baker Mayfield is amped up for the big game. We'll hear from him later on. Stick with us. Welcome back to Big Friday Sports. Tailgate weather for your game in, Bay, or in Waco. 60 degrees, partly cloudy skies. A few storms will build in by, by kickoff before cooling off to 53 degrees, partly cloudy skies. Other than those few storms at the beginning of kickoff, should be a good game for the set for the second half. Guys, what do I need to know more about our college game day of the week? Back to you. Thanks, Braden. Well, let's get back to sports and specifically Sooner football. And the best way to do that might just be to throw it back down to Mason Prince. Mason and the game day team are in Waco and will be giving you two hours of pregame coverage starting right after this newscast. Mason? All right, thanks. All right, thanks, Ashley. We're back here. The sun is starting to set on the banks of the Brazos. Mason Prince back here with you. Just 27 hours to kick off of OU's biggest game of the season so far. What's at stake? OU needs to beat Baylor, TCU, and OSU in the final three weeks of the season to win Big 12 title number nine and hopefully clinch a spot in the college football playoff in January. A big part of OU's recent success on the offensive side of the ball, walk-on transfer quarterback Baker Mayfield, who continues to be one of the best in the nation. Who knows, Mayfield may see his name on a Heisman ballot in December in New York. Well, he's going to be a big part of OU's success on Saturday. When I'm a little bit too hyped up, I, I don't don't settle in and make the routine plays that I should. And it, it, for me, it's all about making the routine plays because I don't need to do anything special uh, considering the guys I have around me. My supporting cast is, I mean, they're, they're very talented, so I need to go out there and do the routine plays, which is uh, just execute and get the ball out of my hands. What I'm proud of him is, is he has done such a good job of being smart with the football and um, to go with making great decisions of when to hand it off, when to throw it, you know, when to – you know, throwing great deep balls, all of that. But um, he's done a great job being smart with the ball. And then when I'm able to relax and just settle in, uh, we play well. And so I uh, take it upon my shoulders and uh, take it personal this week to just do my job, my job only. Mark Sachs, Reagan, Ledbetter, and Carson Williams. Guys, Baker Mayfield's going to be a big part of that success. But what else do the Sooners need to do right on Saturday to get a win here in Waco? I think a lot of attention, and rightfully so, will be on the leading receiver, Sterling Shepard. So that means D.D. Westbrook's going to be a guy who really needs to step up. He can start to open up the offense, take some pressure away from Sterling, and be able to spread the ball a lot easier for Baker Mayfield. I think looking at Sterling Shepard's probably the most important part. In the last two years, the Sooners have lost to Baylor. Shepard has been out last year, and took out because of injury the year before. He has three receptions for 43 yards in his time at OU playing against Baylor, so he'll be a big factor t tomorrow night here in Waco. I'm going to go with running back Samaj P. Ryan. You know, last year he only got five carries against this uh, Baylor defense. That's not going to cut it this year. He and uh, also Baker Mayfield talked about uh, on Monday they need to get that uh, run game established early, get it going. Baylor's run defense isn't very good, so they need to take huge advantage of that. Well, that's it for Big Friday Sports from game day you for Big Friday Sports. We'll be right back after this, but we're going to send it back to the studio. Ashley Davis, back to you. Thanks, Mason. Have a great show. And we're moving on with a little more sports for the rest of the day. That's right. The Thunder take on the 76ers tonight in OKC and a late happy birthday to Russell Westbrook, who turned 27 yesterday. Also, he's the man right now who will, who will have to carry the team with Kevin Durant out. Philly hasn't won a game yet this season. 
I know, I'm excited for the game. Well, thanks for watching OU Nightly's Big Friday Sports to join us on Monday for a look back of the weekend in Sooner Sports. And remember, Sooner Sports Pad. Sooner Sports Pad comes your way on Monday nights on Fox Sports Oklahoma. On behalf of our entire OU Nightly team, thank you so much for joining us. Good night.